Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. My name is Darren. I'm an outdoor photographer. I'm based here in beautiful Ireland. And in today's video, I want to talk about one of the biggest challenges in landscape photography, and that is working with natural light. Now, light is a crucial element that can make or break your shot, but it's also one of the hardest to control. So let's talk about how I think you can master it. One of the first challenges we face as landscape photographers is that light changes constantly. And unlike any studio photography, we can't control the sun, the clouds or the weather. Now, you might plan for a beautiful golden hour shot, but end up with overcast skies or harsh midday sun. The key here is flexibility. Now, don't get locked into a specific idea of what the perfect light looks like. Learn to work with what you have. Now, harsh sunlight, okay, no problem. Use it to create dramatic shadows. If it's overcast light, okay, that works great for detailed shots because it's like a natural light box above the scene. The important part here is being adaptable because this will lead to better results. Now, it goes without saying that golden hour and blue hour are two of the best times to shoot landscapes. Golden hour, as you may already know, is right after sunrise or before sunset. And this is when the light is soft, warm and creates those long, beautiful shadows. It's a favorite about many photographers because it adds warmth and also adds depth to a scene. But golden hour doesn't last that long, so you have to be prepared. Now, on the other hand, blue hour occurs just before sunrise or just after sunset. And this happens when the light is cooler and softer. This time is often overlooked, but it can create some calm and peaceful mood in your shots. Now, knowing how to work with both golden hour and blue hour gives you the flexibility and variety in your photos. Far too often I see people rock up for a sunset, they may or may not get a sunset light, and then they're off. But after that is when the light becomes really, really interesting. I've got a number of shots over the years that I've stayed after sunset until blue hour kicks in and it really changes the scene. It also allows you to do some longer exposures without any filters. So bear that in mind the next time you're going out for a sunrise shoot, get there earlier or for a sunset shoot, stay there later. Most photographers try and avoid shooting during the midday, right? Ah, why? The sun is overhead, shadows are harsh, and it can be tricky to get a really good balanced exposure. But midday light isn't all that bad. In fact, you can more than likely use that harsh light to your advantage, especially when you're shooting textures, rock formations, or if you're lucky enough to have a desert landscape where the contrast really makes the scene pop. Now, one tip I can share is that if the light is too harsh for white landscape photos, then focus on smaller scenes or details within the landscape, like trees, water, or shaded areas where the light is going to be softer. You can also consider with harsh light to go black and white. And this also really helps you to be able to distinguish the light between the bright and the dark, so you get a good bit of contrast as well in those images. If you're also shooting in mountainous areas, daytime light can be great because you can get lots of layering that can you off into the distance. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but don't rule it out because there's still options there if the conditions are right for harsh midday light. Next, I want to talk about something that we have quite a lot here in Ireland, and that is overcast skies. Now, it's easy to think that grey skies ruin a shoot, but they can actually be a blessing in disguise. Cloudy weather creates soft, even light, which is perfect for capturing detail without any harsh shadows or without risking to blow the highlights. Now, when I have a situation here, when I'm going looking at the skies and I see that it is a grey day, then I think, like I said earlier, this is a natural light box. Now also on overcast days, focus less on the sky and more on the foreground and use that soft light to capture intricate details in rocks, foliage or water. You can also create 
moodier atmospheric shots in foggy or forested areas where even lighting really adds to the scene. Now, if you've got a grey day, my advice would be go look for waterfalls. Why? Because you've no highlights to deal with. It gives you balanced and even light across the scene. This, you'll find, is a lot more pleasing and a lot easier as well to shoot. So, if it's a grey day, it doesn't matter. There's still going to be a shot. Now, of course, sometimes natural light isn't going to be enough, and that's when filters come into play. Now, there's three essential filters for landscape photography that I use. Number one is a polarizing filter. So this reduces the glare, especially when you're shooting near water or wet surfaces, and it makes the skies a lot more saturated. What that will also do is it'll bring out a lot more of the natural color. Now, the important thing to remember here with a polarizer is that you cannot replicate that in post. And also, make sure that you're turning your polarizer to see which part of your frame is being polarized. Watch out in the skies. If you turn the polarizer incorrectly, you will have a dark area within that sky or a darkened area per se, which is very difficult to fix in post. When you're shooting in water, you want to take off the glare from the water because it'll allow you to be able to see underneath that water. So important, turn and twist your polarizer to make sure that it's right for the scene. If you change your composition, always readjust your polarizer again because it's going to be angled this way for the last shot, this way for this shot, so it's going to be completely incorrect for that shot. Now, the next filter is that I use, which is a neutral density filter. And this really helps you to reduce the amount of light hitting your sensor, allowing you to do longer exposures even in the brightest conditions. Effectively, think of it like sunglasses for your lens. Now, there are varying different intensities of these filters. I like to use a six stop or a 10 stop, but there will be times when I'll just need a small bit extra of control of that light and I can use a three stop. There are various brands that are out there. The brand that I use currently is one by Case, which is magnetic, so they just snap on to the front of the camera, which I find a lot easier. But there is no good or bad ones out there. Get whatever suits you and also suits your budget. And then the final type is a graduated ND filter. So you use this when you have a bright sky and a darker foreground. A graduated ND filter helps to balance the exposure, giving you more detail in both areas. Now, important to remember that these filters can be game changers, especially when the natural light isn't cooperating. It also can be game changers when the natural light is cooperating, because you might want to get a certain shutter speed to have a certain movement in water. You can't do that unless you use those filters. So if you haven't got any neutral density filters, I'd highly recommend for them to become part of your gear. To really understand light, you need to understand the weather. Now, reading the weather is another really important skill that you need to understand to master light. Now, I've already made a complete episode in this series about the importance of weather. If you haven't seen that, I'll link to that up here. But you can use apps now that will really help you to understand more. Now, the app that I use most at the moment is Windy, because that will help me to be able to track cloud cover, wind speeds and weather conditions overall, allowing me to plan better. When you start looking at these apps, it's important to get a second opinion. And if two apps stay the same thing, then the chances are that that's what's going to happen. Now, I've often joked here in Ireland that the Irish weather forecasters have a very easy job. All I have to say is cloudy, chance of rain. But at the same point, I've gone out many times and these apps have been spot on. Another app that I started to use recently, well, a website actually, is Fortress by another photographer similar to myself, a landscape photographer. He's based in Austria. His name is Christian. It's a fantastic tool because it gives you advance notice of when potential opportunities will come. But like everything, that can form part of checking against another as well. And finally, good landscape photography often comes down to being in the right place at the right time. So 
Another set of apps that you can use is the photographer's Ephorus or photo pills because these allow you to plan the shoots by showing you where the sun and the moon's position is going to be at any given location. But it's important to remember that even with planning, light is unpredictable. You need to be adaptable. Sometimes the weather changes and you won't get what you expected. And when that happens, shift your focus. Maybe another part of the landscape will work better in the available light. Or you can try again later in the day. You can put that trip down or there's a scouting mission but you can also say okay I'm going to come back for that. Another thing about light is like I said it's unpredictable so always watch in the direction that it's going. So if you're shooting in this direction keep an eye over here if the wind is moving the clouds this way because if you see a break in light over here it is going to head in your direction. So be ready to take that shot because light doesn't wait for anybody. It can be and gone again. So if you understand light and you're watching light, you can be ready to bag that shot. So understanding natural light in landscape photography takes practice and it also takes patience. It's about working with the light you have rather than waiting for the perfect light. Now, whether it's golden hour, midday or overcast conditions, every type of light has its potential. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more tips and tutorials. And let me know in the comments what kind of light you prefer working with and how you make the most of those conditions. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Schlange Fall.